would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no censors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. The more I look at these two images side by side, the more I am totally convinced that the story told in the HBO series Game of Thrones was not fiction. It was based on a series of novels by George R. R. Martin called A Song of Ice and Fire. The series ended very abruptly and very badly, leaving people with a lot of questions wondering, how could it have ended that way? They did such a good job telling this incredible story. Why did they end it so badly? Well, personally, I believe they were lifting the story from lost history and making a series based on it. And then when the history ran out, so did their content. There are way too many similarities in these two images. Now, let me explain for those of you who don't know what you're looking at, what this is. On the right is a fictional map, allegedly, created of the two lands spoken of in the quote-unquote fictional series Game of Thrones, Westeros and Essos. On the left is an actual image from Google Earth Pro of where the tip of Argentina and Chile meets Antarctica. Now, in the map on the right, of course, we see this area here called the North. What would happen during a pole flip? See, instead of this being the south over here, this would be the north. But what do we see? See this area, this land right here? It's all been pushed out of the way. And what do we see here? We see a giant, huge scoop taken out of the land between the tip of Antarctica and the tip of Argentina. As if there was some catastrophic natural disaster, which a pole flip would cause. See, down here, they have an area called the Summer Sea. Very shallow, very warm. The land, of, quote unquote, what they call the land of the long summer, is right here. Here they call the Argentine Sea. See how this is all dark and tan and mountainy? Just like here. And see how this area up here is very green. This part of Argentina is as well. It's now covered, of course, with snow. But underneath, and just what we would refer to as north of here, it is very, very green, far more green and lush on the west coast of Argentina, or west coast, which would be Chile, than on the east coast. There are just way too many similarities in the story. We have shown many pictures in my playlist with Antarctica, you can find them, of what look like the remnants of dragons in Antarctica, or what history is described as dragons. And that was pretty much one of the main plot lines, how the dragons destroyed everything. They talk about the seven kingdoms. There are seven continents on our planet. I believe what we're looking at is this is pre-pole shift 
this region. And that's why we see just that one bit of difference. Now, this thing called the Narrow Sea, way, way back when they first discovered this region, there was a pass right through here where you could pass from the Atlantic into the Pacific without actually having to go through here. I don't think this existed at the time. I know it's a, I know it's a reach, but also remember something. This meme has become so popular, I thought I would bring up a funny one for Florida. Winter is coming. Now, in the series, they had long stretches of warm weather, followed by long stretches of cold weather. Well, what happens in Antarctica? The sun goes down and doesn't reappear for months. And then the sun comes up and stays up for a very long time. Now, people say, well, wait a minute, it still stays freezing cold. The only reason it stays freezing cold now in Antarctica is because of this gap. You see, if there were a solid piece of land right here, and this has been stated by many geologists and scientists, it would stop the currents that swirl around Antarctica. This whole area, the Antarctic Peninsula, would have been green. Now imagine living in an area that was green and temperate, but the sun never went down. What would it look like? Remember in the series, A Game of Thrones, the Dothraki Sea, this giant desert with no water? The cities of Marine, the pyramids, all of that? That would be the case. And then when the sun went down, it would get very, very cold for a long time. They fictionalized the time, meaning they talked about thousands of years being between summers and winters. But this is what I think that the story they were trying to tell. In my last video, I talked about the Antikythera mechanism. It's been alleged that it was made in roads. There's a problem with this in the ancient world. And they even almost admit it in the Wikipedia for the Antikythera device. The ancient world did a very good job of building things big. They had the engineering capability of creating massive structures. This is a, an image of the Colossus of Rhodes, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, long since gone. But one thing the ancient world did not do well was tiny and intricate. They could make fantastic swords and bows, and even to some extent they could build fortifications and they could uh, do all sorts of defensive measures, but to make the tiny little intricate pieces that would have been required was beyond their capability. The casting techniques just had not been invented yet to create all of the little teeny tiny itty bitty and these machine pieces had to have been perfect at this level if you have the teeth off or canted wrong a little bit if the bearing spindles or even have a little bit of play when you have 37 interlocking gears like this in this tiny of a machine it's gonna seize up immediately Everything has to be absolutely perfect. And they just didn't have the ability to create tiny things at this level at that time. Now, something else about Antarctica that would make a device like this absolutely necessary. The stars would move very differently, very, very differently, on the South Pole because of where you were you would realize immediately that you were on the bottom of a globe because there's no other way you could explain the movement of the stars and if you traveled as far as the Mediterranean how you navigated down there would be entirely different than how you navigate up there it, it would be a whole th different thing in Antarctica the closer you get to the pole every every direction is north 
every direction would be north or south. It would be virtually impossible to, to navigate. The farther away from where you learn to navigate, the more hopelessly lost your techniques would be. Now let me show you this real quick on the, uh, the wiki on origin. The Antikythera mechanism is generally referred to as the first known analog computer. Now this is the most important statement of the whole thing. The quality and the complexity of the mechanism's manufacture suggests that it must have had undiscovered predecessors made during the Hellenistic period. This was the entire um, point I was trying to make about this. Sorry about that. That was just a search page. There's no way there wouldn't have been tools found with it. There wouldn't have been... There, you would have found all of the dies. They would have created other machines that had entirely different purposes. If they had the ability to create something this complex in Turkey or in Greece, we have found things far older than the Antikythera mechanism from that time, but no evidence anywhere in their history that they had this level of the ability to make tiny, very, very specific, intricate things. Nowhere else do we see this. And there are places, like for example Turkey, who have already admitted this. They've looked at the historical record and have pretty much come out and said, Antarctica hides Earth's hidden history. Say Turkish scientist. This is uh, the Hurriyet Daily News. I'll give you a link to this and you can read this. Shedding new light on the mysteries of Antarctica's long, dark winter. See, this is a very weird thing when this uh, series came out. This idea of talking about a winter that lasts for decades. A summer that lasts for decades. I really think it was just an analog of what goes on at the South Pole. Where the sun comes up and never goes down. It just goes lower in the sky, higher in the sky. Lower in the sky, higher in the sky. And then it just disappears. This had to have been what they were talking about. And when you add in everything, so many other things. The giants. We found evidence of giants in Antarctica. How many giant skulls have we found? Six, seven? Giants. Dragons. Visually, it's literally the same place. You have this wall up here that they talk about where on the other side, you know, there are these things that are just undead. And it really does make you wonder how it jives with other stories of the region. And how there are just pictures on maps that we've seen from the 15th and 16th century that put the tip of South America literally right on top of the Antarctic Peninsula. They don't describe some 300 mile gap. what we know to be the Sandwich Islands, this area over here just off the map a little bit. I should probably take a better picture that shows this. Could have been the remnants of Dorn, the Reach, the North, King's Landing, all this kind of stuff. All could have been washed away. One giant tidal flood and that's exactly what it looks like down here. Visually it looks like this. I mean, you've got the uh, the Falklands here, and here it shows the same level of islands. It shows how um, down here, how it gets much greener up towards southern Brazil. Same thing here. When you go look at Google Earth Pro, and I would can I would uh, encourage people to go look at Google Earth Pro, look at this region, spin it around so it's at this angle, and put it up next to this map. It's not hard to find this. Just find uh, map Westeros W E S T E R O. S or Essos, E-S-S-O-S. 
and you've got you know the shivering sea up here you've even got a little bay over here so anyway i will leave it there um and let you guys discuss like share subscribe and we will see you next time thank you would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over at the Florida Maki Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable, first 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no censors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over at the Florida Maki Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable first 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no censors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much.